Hey, so today I wanted to show you how to set up your Mac. Whenever you get a new computer, you should do a bunch of adjustment just to make the experience um, better. And here is my setup that I do when I get a new, a new Mac. First off, most importantly, you should go through all the settings for the whole computer as well as for each app, as there's a bunch of useful tweaks that you can make just to make the experience uh, a little bit better. So obviously when you get a new computer, you log in with your iCloud account um, that should sync a bunch of things from iCloud. You have the iCloud drive that syncs the data of a bunch of apps, but also the desktop and documents folder. This is just something you have to know, whatever you save to the desktop or the documents folder, it will go straight to iCloud. So here you can see desktop and documents are in the cloud. Other things that will be synced are your photos, mail, contacts, calendar, reminder, all of these things. I can't turn on find my Mac because this is not my Mac. Let's go through the system preferences to see what other tweaks you can make. So first in general, I guess by default, it's set to auto, which means that it will move to dark mode, maybe after sunset, I'm not exactly sure at what time. Uh, the accent color, I guess it has been blue in Mac since forever, but you could change that so that your accents will be a different color. Let's leave that to default. Scroll bars, this is, is one that's important for me. Mac OS will only show these whenever things you need them. However, I would like to always have them just so that I know in a long PDF how far through I am. So here now you can see the scroll bars always. And if you wouldn't have that, then it would hide them, which I think it's silly and it brings them up again when I go into scrolling mode. Um, another thing uh, about scroll bar is that uh, it will scroll page by page. However, I prefer to jump straight to the spot that I clicked at. So jump straight here or jump straight here. Default web browser, whatever your preference is. The other things are fine. The handoff is quite important because it allows you, for instance, to copy and paste stuff from your iPhone to your Mac or vice versa uh, if they're connected to the same iCloud account. So make sure that one is on. Default screensaver, well, which is also dynamic, so it, it gets darker throughout the day. Screensaver, screensaver, the default is really not nice. So I prefer either the uh, old school one. Let's see, we can have a preview of that one, just because it's a bit more colorful. Or the drift, which I think is new in uh, Mac OS Catalina. Spectrum, oh, this is nicer. So just have it be all the colors. Yeah, I prefer that much more. All right, then we also want to show the clock. If your screen goes off after 10 minutes, let's say the screen saver should start after five minutes, something like that. Another thing that I really like to set up is hot corners. So basically to show the notification center here, so you can just go in this corner and you don't have to click, it will just open and close it. Some people get really confused with hot corners because you quite often accidentally hit them. So what I like to do is to just keep like you can do it with any of the modifier keys, but I use I like to use Alt. So now notification center won't pop up only if you have Alt. Uh, if you hold down Alt, and then what do I do here? Here on top left we start a screensaver. Bottom left we want to show the desktop. There you go, hot corners, super important. Uh, the dock size, I think it doesn't really matter for me because I add some apps to it that it will just get uh, small by default. Uh, magnification, I do not like. I think it's also off by default. I keep it on the bottom. The genie effect is kind of that it gets sucked into here, which I'm not that big of a fan of. So just the scale effect is a bit more, a bit more clean. Uh, prefer tabs always. I guess now that they have tabs in Finder uh, and many other apps, you should just always use apps, not to get too confused with the with the windows you have open. And then minimize windows into application icon. So if you click this, then you won't really see what you have open. Uh, animate. I hate when my icons are jumping around. Uh, automatically hide and show the dock. Um, I don't put that on because I mostly work with full screen apps and there the dock is hidden by default. The indicator lights here is the little the little dot below an icon to show which one is currently active. 
recent application in Doc. Oh yeah, that's a new addition in Catalina, I believe. And that's just this icon here. So if you open apps that are not already in your Doc, let's see, system information. It opens it in a separate segment of the Doc. And then if you close it, it will keep it here and will keep a maximum of three icons, which I think that's quite nice. Mission control. When you swipe up with three fingers, uh, it's basically the, the multiple spaces you have here. So now I just have one. If I reopen Safari and I put it in full screen, it will open in a separate space. And then something Mac likes to do is to rearrange those spaces based on most recent use, uh, which I really dislike. I want to manage those myself. If we have multiple apps open, I can, I can just drag them in whatever order I, I like. And then I kind of know, or if I go left from news, it will always have Safari, which is, in my opinion, much better. I think this one just, this just means to keep windows of the same app in the same space, which is not a big issue for me because I use full screen and tabs mostly. Uh, this is for external displays that they have their own spaces. There's some shortcuts here for mission control. Uh, I don't really use those because I would prefer to use four fingers gestures, so I can just turn these off in some multiple places. Siri, I don't have Hey Siri enabled because I don't find it that useful. Not much to say about this one. Look at that later. Spotlight, super useful. I think it has everything turned on by default. Uh, command space will bring up Spotlight. Oh, and if you do Shift Command Space, I guess, I guess it will search straight in Finder. Language and region is set up fine by default. Notifications, do not disturb. Sure, I can turn that on, but only for midnight. When display is off, don't show notifications. When screen is locked, I guess we can show those because this is not a work computer. People don't call that often these days, so I just leave all of those on. Sorting by most recents, recents by app. Sounds good, so it groups them together by app. I think that sounds reasonable. Let's not look at the other ones for now. It's just some general notification settings. Apple Pay, set it up as you like. I think it's super useful. Touch ID already set up one finger. Uh, I think it is useful to set up a couple if you want to let a family member access the, the computer or your account specifically. As I said, it's not my computer, so I won't change anything to the users on this account. Now, there's some important settings in accessibility. Uh, the most important one for me, pointer control, trackpad options, enable dragging with three fingers. So it just means that instead of needing to click and drag, I can just use three fingers. And the same thing works as well with text. Just with three fingers, you can select your text and then you can also just drag it somewhere. So no more clicking, no repetitive strain injuries for people who use their computers a lot. Double click, I think I'm probably quite fast in that so that I don't have accidental double clicks. For instance, if you want to edit, you, you do a second click to do this. So the shorter the double click is, the easier you can do other actions that require two clicks. Screen time, let's leave that off for now. Security and privacy. Require password. I think this one is also super useful to set it to five seconds. So if your computer goes to sleep and you, you didn't want to, you're still sitting at the computer, you can just hit a key during five seconds and it will wake up again. You have five seconds. Another security setting is to unlock your Mac with an Apple Watch if you have one. This mostly works okay for me. It's sometimes, if you're not close enough, it might be a bit wonky. This is also the section if you download an app from the internet that doesn't come from the App Store and it's not an uh, identified developer, then you will get a notification here if you really want to install this app. So you might come back to here often as well. 5 volt is disk encryption. Um, I have this turned on on my work machine, but not on my personal one. Other privacy settings, whenever an app requests to read your contacts or calendars, it will show up here. Similarly for location services, so you can see which apps have access to your location. For instance, if we allow the weather to access our location, then we get the location specific weather information here. Third party apps will also show up so you can remove location access for them. Interesting ones in here 
So time zone makes sense. Like if you don't want to switch your time zone manually, if you travel, I think a location-based suggestion, that's kind of what uh, Siri does. Uh, Apple ads will turn that off. And then here we can also show in the menu bar. I guess now nothing requested our location. News, for instance, now will show us this compass needle here. And then it tells us our oh, news recently accessed your location, which is quite handy, especially for third-party apps. It keeps asking for your location. You can, you can see it here and disable it. Software updates. Uh, let's see, we do want to keep it automatically updated, definitely for the App Store. I guess the macOS updates, it can install those overnight. Bluetooth, it also synced all of my uh, headphones and earphones from my iCloud account. However, I do want to show Bluetooth here just in case I want to connect quickly to a new keyboard or a new, a new external mouse or trackpad or something. So sound. Similar with that, I want to show it in the menu bar just so that you can adjust the volume. If you alt click, you can also change the, the input devices and such. Uh, no user interface effects, don't like those. Here you can test your microphones. If you have an external microphone attached, it will show up here. Keyboards, yes, I want to use tab to move focus between. Yeah, now I can use tab to move focus between buttons and text fields, for instance. Input is another interesting one to show in the menu bar. For the trackpad settings, I do like most of the defaults, except the three finger drag that I showed you earlier from accessibility. The lookup, I can leave it to a force touch if you, it will give you dictionary lookups, which is actually quite nice. I think tap to click already turned it on earlier. That's off by default. Creates too much strain for no reason on your fingers. Tracking speed could be a tiny bit faster, something like that. Scroll, natural, pinch to zoom, smart zoom. This one's a bit odd because I, I like it in most apps to use two fingers to swipe between pages. But in Chrome and Safari, it also goes back when you swipe with two fingers, which can conflict with two axes scrolling around. Show desktop, if you don't want to use the hot corners. Mouse, I never use a mouse. Even externally, I, I only use trackpads because they are so much more precise and they allow you to do things like three finger drag. So I don't want to use a mouse. Can automatically adjust the brightness. Then we also have the mirroring options here. So whenever you connect an external display, it will show up here. If you want to use sidecar with your iPad, it will show up here. So it's always good to have that in the menu bar. Uh, night shift. I do like night shift to make you sleepy for bed. Energy savers, so turn display off after five minutes. That's fine. And slight dimming on battery power. Power nap is just so that your computer still fetches emails and notifications even when the screen is off or even closed. However, you don't want to do that on battery life. Uh, we also want the battery status here. I'm not sure. Here, here. And seconds as well. That's most of it for system preferences. So now I want to walk through the different uh, apps that I use and go through the settings there as well. In Finder you can go to the Finder preferences on the desktop. Don't want to show the hard drive on the desktop. Here are the favorite tags. Let's populate those. It does sync the tags across your machines but for some reason you have to populate the favorite ones. After tags moving on to the sidebar it actually has a bunch that I always like to change. For recents I don't really use it. Similar for the file formats I'm really not interested in those. However my home folder I really need it. As I said before everything that's here it's synced, synced to iCloud. I also like to show the entire computer name as well as the hard drive. Show file extension definitely. I don't know why this is off by default. Show warning before changing the extension. I think I know what I'm doing when I'm changing it. A text file that you convert to HTML or something. Warning when removing stuff to iCloud Drive, same. I think I know what I'm doing. Emptying the bin, sure. Uh, I like to do it manually. Folders on top, yes. This one is super important. Here, by default, it goes to this Mac. However, I would like the default to be the current folder that we're in. So this will be the default and I can always go back. Especially if I look for something project specific, just want to leave it in the current folder and subfolders. There's other view options here. So we want everything to always use column view. And then we just sort by name, that's fine. We want to see the icons, icon preview. So this is, this is just to show the little image here. 
for Finder where it should show the path bar. So this is down here. It's super important to like always know where you are. And I also want to show the status bar. Similarly, it just tells you either what you have selected or how, how much space the current folder takes on your disk. All right, I think that's it mostly for Finder. I like to keep my settings here. Okay, I think I'll stop it there. There's obviously a lot more configuration and setup that you can do inside each individual app, be it in the built-in apps or other apps that you have downloaded and installed on your Mac. Um, but I've decided to keep the rest of this configuration kind of written down in article form. So it's easier to update and also to follow. And in these articles, you can also find more specific information for instance, for like a developer setup or useful apps and utilities that you should install. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned what all these hidden settings mean and that you can now configure your Mac to be your own.